brief introduction to Senator Harris. A Republican candidate, Dr. Harris was elected to the Maryland Senate in 1998 and is serving his third term in the Maryland General Assembly. He represents the 7th Legislative District, which includes part of Baltimore and Hartford counties. The only physician in the Senate, he currently serves on the Senate Education, Health, and Environmental Affairs Committee. He's also a member of the Taxpayers Protection Caucus, the Maryland Veterans Caucus, as well as the Redistricting and Elections Committee of the National Conference of State Legislators. Dr. Andy Harris lives in Cockeysville with his wife Sylvia and their five children. He maintains a full-time practice as an obstetric, obstetric anesthesiologist at the Johns Hopkins Hospital, where he also teaches as an associate professor of anesthesiology and critical care medicine. Dr. Harris served as, commander, as a commander in the United States Navy Reserve and as a member of the American Legion. He has been an active member of St. Joseph Catholic Church in Cockeysville for over 28 years. He was the vice president of the St. Joseph School Homeschool Association for two years and now serves on the <coughs> school's board. Dr. Harris is also a current member of the Knights of Columbus. His name will appear on the ballot in the Republican primary on September 14th. To the best of my knowledge, he is the only, he is presently the only declared Republican candidate. You're welcome to the mic if you like. Thank you. federal government in managing, controlling, and delivering health care. And the second part is whether aspects of the current House or Senate bill that you agree with. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Nick, for, put, for putting this together. And you know, I've handed you the pledge. I've taken that pledge publicly to make term limits one of my first uh, priorities, the term limit constitutional amendment uh, in the U.S. Congress. Let's talk a little about health care. It's, obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty favorite subject of mine. I've been delivering for 25 years. And the other thing is, as, as I look around you, as I look around here, I've seen many of you who on that cold day when it started snowing in Bel Air, standing outside the congressman's office, you know, just hoping, against hope, that we could stop the health care bill. And thanks to all of you, it looks like we've stopped it. Now, what if, well, yeah, that is an applause to you. Because I tell you, the way the American system works that no matter what goes on in Washington, that's still a government that's of the people, by the people, and ultimately for the people. And when the people stood up and spoke, and they spoke all around the United States, they spoke in Massachusetts, we got the right result. And the right result was to send that bill, return to sender on that bill that's going through Congress. Now, you, everyone knows publicly, I said, that bill is, is terrible. It's, it's got to be totally rewritten. But your question was, two questions. What is, what is the role of the federal government? There is no constitutionally mandated role of federal government in health care. Now, they have done it. I mean, they put in Medicare, they put in Medicaid, they continually expand Medicaid every year, including two years ago, 2007, in the middle of a budget crisis in Annapolis. What do they do? Raise your taxes and expand, and expand health care uh, in the state, state-run health care. That's wrong. It's a wrong solution. It's a solution that's got us into bankruptcy, and it's going to keep us in bankruptcy if we don't solve the problem. The second part of the question is the health care bill. Was there a good part? Yeah, there was a good part. The part, the only part that was good, and there weren't many in that bill, was the idea of setting up the health care exchanges. And the reason why everybody here should be interested in that is because ultimately you want to own your health care insurance. You don't want your employer to own it. You don't want your employer to even pick it. You want them to help them pay for it in, in, a, in, a, in a contract you negotiate with your employer, but you want to own, your, own that product. That was part of the bill. Part of the bill said that there were going to be these health care exchanges where you as a citizen and as a worker could go, pick your product, just like all federal employees do, and have your employer contribute toward it. And it would be different for every employer, but if you left your job and you went to the next employer, you kept that insurance, and your next employer helped you pay for it. That is very important in, in turning around the problems we have with health care. Now, the, uh, the bad part of that was, because they couldn't get it right in the bill, is they set up the exchange and then they said, oh, and by the way, we want a public option to be one of the one of the solutions. That is wrong, it's incorrect, and this is one place where I disagree with our congressman. He said public option was kind of a good idea. I think it was a terrible idea. 
it alone would be enough if that were in a bill for me to say there's no way. No matter what else is good in a bill, you can't have government uh, running health care. It's just not right.